Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. We have a great show lined up. Got a special guest here. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Only going to get 8 to 9 a day and low of 7 to 7. So we've got a little uh, cool snap coming in because it's not going to be in the 90s, uh, what the weather service tells us. But the water temperature is the hottest as, as, as it has been all year. It's 86 degrees out there on the water. And I was in the swimming in the other afternoon. It was really nice and comfortable. So 86 degrees on the water temperature, okay? Take a look at our river readings. The Appalachicola Bluntstown, it is real steady. It's reading a 2.2 and not, not much movement on the big river. But on the Choctahatchee, it's rising a little bit. It's reading 4.7 this morning. going to get on up about 4.8. But if you're looking for this weekend, Friday, it's going to start dropping out a little bit. And Saturday morning, you'll have a little bit of falling water if you're going to hit the uh, Choctahatchee River. Uh, the tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. You pick these tide charts up at CNG Sporting Goods. You're looking at today's tide chart. It's going to be, we're looking at August the 13th. We're halfway through August. We've got about three or four days of neat tides right in here. Not much movement at all. Uh, so this is going to be uh, technically a high tide. is going to be 101 and low at 745. You're looking at a 0.3 uh, foot movement, so not a lot. Marine forecast will be south-southwest at about 5 to 10. All right, take care of our weather. We'll be right back with our guest. All right, welcome back, and as always, welcome Ronnie Groom. Morning, buddy. Good to see you. Ronnie started you. hitting our truck this morning, just had this big old bag full of stuff. <laughs> so what have you been up to? Just uh, taking care of business, trying <laughs> to get everybody ready to go in the woods. <laughs> well, uh, some are sort of getting winding down, and then we start thinking about hunting. So uh, Yeah. I, we got a lot of people coming in now. They're starting to, you know, do the mowing and get their food plots mm -hmm. ready, and uh, it's getting time. It's going to be here before we know it. Yeah. So what do you got on you? We've got a lot of cameras. I just, I, I couldn't believe that. I mean, it used to just be one camera out there. Right. And now we've got a variety. You know, the one camera that used to be out there was the old Cuddy back. That was the one that's most popular. Mm -hmm. And it's a good camera. It's been around a while. And we got these on sale right now, $100 off. So that, you know, that's a known camera. Been around a long time and a good camera. Okay. But there's so many out now. There's just, you know, we probably got the largest selection anywhere in this area of cameras. We must have you know, 10, 12, 15 different cameras and for all kind of purposes and all kind of prices. For instance, this Moultrie, which is a very well-known line of cameras, you know, this is $79.95. They start right. off real reasonable and uh, they do a good job and we sell a lot of Moultries. But you know, I uh, I checked on the website and there's a, there's, a, there's a company on there that what they do is rate and test and repair cameras and they rate them. And the top rated camera, which was in the four or $500 range, was number one. Oh yeah. And they're American made. But number two and three was Browning. And Browning makes some really good cameras. I'm using them now and I really like them. Uh, here's one right here, you know, it's a $130 camera, which is, you know, that's a real reasonable price. And it's, it's eight megapixels, it's silent, you know, and it's, it's really a good, a good camera. It's called a Range Ops, and that's a, it's a very popular camera. Uh, they make one called the Dark Ops. And let me see, this is it right here, and I just opened the front of it. You can see right here is where the card fits. This is where you read all, you know, do your settings. And uh, this is the smallest camera out there, and it does yeah. a really good job. Uh, it makes no, we sell a lot of these for security because it makes no flash or anything. Oh, okay. And it's so small and compact, you can hide it, and uh, it does a good job. And they're making such good cameras now, and they're improving them so much every time. You know, one of the main things in, in game cameras is battery life. Mm -hmm. And some of them, most of them, like these small ones, take six. Some of them take eight uh, batteries, little double A's. And they do such a good job now. It's just, it's just about as much fun to hunt with a camera as it is a gun anymore. I just can't wait. You know, when I go get my cards out, and take them home, put them in the computer. Or you can get a reader and read them right out there on the spot. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of them even have a little screen built in the camera where you can read them in the camera, delete pictures, take out the ones you want, put the card back in. 
and uh, it's just a good thing to have. And these cameras are, are really nice now. They come. This one right here is a, is a Moultrie that has a 150 degree angle. Wow. And it takes about three times the size of area pictures that you take with a normal camera. And well, that's a be really good on a large field or something to yeah. come into a field right. and sort of scan. Right. And you know they'll take still pictures or they'll take video. Uh -huh. I mean, you can set them up on a video and you can see where the deer are coming in your field and going out. So you kind of know where to put up your stands, you know, and anticipate where the deer are moving from. Well, and that's the thing about it, too. You, you want them in different areas. Right. Yes. And one item here, this is a, a case to put your camera in a security box. And, uh, you know, some people will lose their cameras. Some of these uh, poachers or somebody will come mm -hmm. in and steal them. And, put this on there and chain it to the tree and you got it on there permanently but that it's just such such an improvement in cameras lately and you know if, if you're hunting you want to know where the, the good deer are do you have some good deer if you've got say four tree stands up where are the biggest deer coming you want to get the prime you know mm -hmm. the, the trophy so you put these cameras out and you check your cars i check mine about once every 10 days i don't want to go in there too much because mm -hmm. that tends to spook them you know mm -hmm. But uh, you just sit them in and all you got to do is flip them open, pull that card out, stick a new card in and leave and you don't disturb things there. And it works really well and uh, I really recommend them. But get, you know, the battery life now has improved so much. Most of them will go, you know, six, eight months, which gets you through the hunting season. Mm -hmm. But you need them out right now. I've really gotten some good pictures. It's, it amazes me, you know, deer horns are some of the fastest growing things there is. And, uh, Right now, these deer, they're still in velvet, but they've got some good horns on them. We've had a good year. The, we've had a lot of rain. It's produced a lot of food, and the deer are really in good shape. It, it has been. I've heard already some good reports and all and some pictures. And like you say, the cameras are out now. People yeah. We've got the cameras out now. Yeah, I, I would get them out right now and start, because you can almost pattern those deer. If you get enough pictures mm -hmm. out, you can tell. You know, it tells you what time of the day they're coming in. Uh, it mm -hmm. tells you, you know, everything about that you want to know is written right on the front of that camera. It takes up, you know, they come in at, at 4 o'clock in the evening and they're leaving about 5 and or in the mornings. And mm -hmm. You can anticipate it and know where to be opening morning. And that's that's so important. I mean, that's, that could be success or not success. And that's right. In the right place at the right time. Right. And especially early in the season when you don't really know where they're going to be. That's yeah. right, you know, That's and they change their habits a little bit too yeah. as the season goes. Well, once yeah, once people start hunting and yeah. all, they're gonna they they you know, know that food changes, their mm -hmm. food patterns change a little, and then they come into the rutting season, they change a little. So uh, you know, early in the season is really a good time to know where they are because they're in a pattern then. But when they start rutting and things, they they start moving and everything. But if you get mm -hmm. in there in the first season and get them patterned, you stand a lot better chance. Yeah. Well, that's a great selection out there, Ronnie. And one thing we didn't talk about was the cards. You got to have these cards. Mm -hmm. These little cards, they're not expensive, and you can just change them out. Mm -hmm. You can delete them. Four gigabytes. Do, okay. the, do the job. So you got all of it down at the store? We got it all, and we got we can you know help you with it if you got some ideas. And like I said, the price range is, is, is quite a difference in price range. They run yeah. from, you know, about $80 up to five six hundred. But you're not trying to win a photo contest. All you want is you want to know what's where. That's true. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And uh, now one thing too, I was going to ask you, what height do you like to put yours at? Down low or up high or what different angles and all? There, there's a lot of debate about that. Uh, they they recommend about three foot off the ground. Okay. One thing I have found is a lot of times you don't have a, a good big tree to put it on. Mm -hmm. And we also sell a little stand you put in the ground that's stable. If you put it on a small tree, that tree, the wind seems to blow it. That'll make that camera take a picture. And you may have a hundred pictures of, of, a, of nothing out there. Yeah. So put it down lower. If you got a small tree, put it down lower, and it doesn't move as much. And also, you got to remember that if you got brush out there that's doing this in the wind, every time it moves, that camera's going to take a picture. So you want to clear out all this low uh, moving brush mm -hmm. and get your camera out there, and that way you won't get a lot of blank pictures. You just get the deer movement pictures and. And uh, you can get, really get some good pictures. I have some that, uh, that well, I'll, I'll bring some in one morning. Okay. And we just look at some pictures I've gotten, you know, right at dark. And uh, some just really good pictures of deer. Not just deer, but uh, birds swooping down, uh, you know, and uh, just raccoons climbing up a feeder leg. And, you <laughs> know, just all kind of good pictures. 
I'll bring them in one morning. We'll just look at okay. some. Okay, we'll do that. And invite anybody that's got some good pictures. Bring them down to the store and bring us a copy of them, and we'll bring them in here and show them if you've got something unique. Get a lot of bear pictures now, too. Yeah, I know. I'm seeing those. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. See, Ronnie Groom already coming up with a lot of presents with outdoorsmen for birthdays and uh, Christmas right around Christmas the corner. Christmas is coming, buddy. So, uh, uh, let's uh, first before we get back to Ronnie, let's talk about this uh, clinic tonight. We talked about it all week and all the legendary Marine. This is Mark and Michael Coward, the father-son team. We all know Mark. He's been on the show before. Uh, it's going to be at six thirty. Be some refreshments there. Uh, it's going to be really good information. Mark and and Michael do a lot of redfish and are very successful at it. And uh, all you need to do is just call Miss Mark Train at this number, 271-8950. Tell her you saw it on Panhandle Outdoors, and you want to come tonight, and they just reserve your seat. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And I plan on being there. Hope to see some of y'all there, and uh, we'll talk about a lot of fishing. Right now, we're talking about a lot of hunting. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's nice to live in this area, isn't it? We can talk about fishing in one sentence and yeah, hunting in the next sentence. We got hunting and fishing. We're just very fortunate to live mm -hmm. where, we, where we do. Uh, you had a range finder. That's something we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah, if you watch the hunting channel now, nobody shoots anything or does anything without a range finder. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you find they do. They, uh, they looking through that range finder and seeing it. It's especially important in archery. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get off five yards, if you misjudge a distance five yards, you can miss or make a bad shot. So a range finder is a handy thing and... Uh, it's easy to use and you stick it in your pocket if you see a, uh, something out there, if, like with a, with a long gun, with a, with a rifle. If he's out there 200 yards, you need to know whether it's 200 or 300 or 100 and you can check it just like that. In fact, what I always did uh, bow hunting, the time I got up in my stand, I would check, you know, see that tree's 20, this one's 15, that one's 45, mm -hmm. so that I knew in advance the distance mm -hmm. and it makes you much more accurate, you know. You can do a, a lot better shot placement. Have you uh, have you been practicing any, or you just or you just going to get everything set up now? Or? Trying to get everybody else set up. Right <laughs> now. But you know, I got a sh bad shoulder, and I shoot a crossbow now. And yeah. uh, you don't need much practice with a crossbow. I can tell you right now, those things are super accurate. And speaking of a crossbow, if we're going to give away a crossbow. If you get on Facebook and like us at CNG, you're registered. Okay. And we're going to give away a, a, a brand new crossbow. That's a great idea. Yes, sir. Just come in and like us. And so, y'all got a Facebook page now? Yeah. A good deal. Yeah, well, and we I've got our website too. If you got okay. any questions or just get on there and check with us. It's amazing how those old dinosaurs are able to keep up this technology. And I don't it, do it, I have some. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a lot of help too, but I try to keep up with it. It's, yeah, you it's do a, a good job. Well, it's, it's a great tool. I, I have to do it because it's And it's kids, a lot of fun and it's yeah. very informative. Yeah, the kids I teach, I've got to keep up with them. And I, I've learned oh, yeah. a lot from oh, them. And then good Jeff, luck. Jeff's over here and, uh, we, and my wife's good at it so it's, and my, my grandkids. So a yeah. combination of all that. I, I, it's, it's, my grandkids do most all of mine. It's you know, amazing, they, isn't it? They are so good at it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sitting there scratching my head, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, who would have thought just several years back, all these different cameras, we, know, we saw that one camera come out for a long time, then, then you know, the panoramic, and then... It's it, just and exploded. It, yeah. Uh, and, and the popularity, of, talking about crossbows, they've become a popular now, aren't they? Oh, man, crossbows are, you know, most all the states now have legalized them during archery season. You can mm -hmm. use them normally in black powder season and in gun season, and they they are just so accurate, you know, up, up to 50 yards, you can hold that thing in in a very small group and mm -hmm. they're just so effective and so fast, so efficient. And, and like I say, it, 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 kids can shoot them or, or young young adults or no matter what age. Yeah, particularly uh, people that have shoulder problems mm -hmm. or get some age on them, you know. And a lot of people don't have the time and patience to learn to, you know, shooting a, a compound or even a, a stick bow, it takes, it takes a lot of practice mm -hmm. and to get good at it, proficient like you should be. But you can take that crossbow and get a, a, a bipod to sit it on, and man, those things are just, you know, they're as accurate as a rifle, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah. Okay, uh, real quick now, uh, Tom, are you fishing reports up at C&G th this summer. How has the fishing been from a lot of fishing you? Fishing has been excellent. Okay. You know, Choctahatchee and Apalachicola Rivers and all the little tributaries has been really good. The bay fishing has been good, and uh, what few what little time we have is good offshore. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, have you had a chance doing freshwater fishing? Or? Yes, sir. I've I've gone from big boats, and big fish to little boats, and little fish, and just having a ball catching the beetle spins and uh, bass fishing. And <laughs> just there's just so much to do in this area. We're very fortunate. Uh -huh. Let's take our final break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. Sir. Ronnie Groom from C&G Sporting Goods in downtown Panama City. I'm going to say a special good morning to Miss Fran Coleman up there in Chipley. Watches the show every morning. She taught school for 42 years. That's Richard's mom. Got to fish with Richard the other day. And Richard told me that you watch the show every morning with a cup of coffee. So appreciate you watching up there in Chipley. Uh, let's look at our fishing game time before we get back to Ronnie. Brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. Mark number is 832-6000. Our time today... 3.02 to 5.02 this morning, and this evening from 3.28 to 5.28. Two blocks of time right there where the fish and the game will be active. Now, Ronnie, uh, you have uh, one more item you wanted to show us. Uh, this, yeah. This is cool. Literally. You know, everybody knows Yeti. Uh -huh. And the Yeti has come out now with a stainless steel mug like this. This is a 30 ounce, and I think they have a 20. And I had a salesman in the store a couple of weeks ago. And he had one of these, and he said that the day before he came in my store, in the afternoon, he had ice in this thing. When he came in my store the next morning, about 10 o'clock, it still had ice in it. Kept it all overnight. They're extremely hard to find right now. We, we get them, but we sell them out the time we get them. But mm -hmm. they make this one, and they make a smaller one, and they really, they're really nice. And they're made by Yeti, so you know it's good quality. That, that is nice. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, th those are little things like that, so good for Christmas presents. And all oh, yeah. I was talking about earlier. Yeah. I wanted, I, we're not going to have time to talk about a lot, but I wanted to tell you how much I've enjoyed this book right here, Shooter Giggers. The Shooter uh, Giggers. Yeah, this, this is, uh, I started reading I just couldn't put it down because what it is, it's just a story of, of Ronnie and six of your buddies. There was yeah. seven of y'all total. Yeah. Uh, in, in the early years, and, he, and it's got uh, of, of skin diving and, and, and spear fishing and all. It's full of pictures and stories. And I was just fascinated because I could, it was amazing back then. Y'all were like trailblazers and didn't really realize y'all were at the time they all did it. But We really didn't know what we were doing to start <laughs> with. We had a, a slow learning curve there. <coughs> but y'all y'all found some enormous <coughs> size fish. And, and well, it was back when, <coughs> when it, you know, there's hardly anybody out there. You, mm -hmm. hardly, you know, just saw, see a few party boats out there. And we were out there diving on these spots, uh, usually the first ones to ever dive on them, you know, mm -hmm. and so, so much good spear fishing out there. And we just, we had a ball and it was good, clean fun, and mm -hmm. we really enjoyed it. And uh, it, it was so many different stories. They just, uh, you know, these things you cannot even reconstruct now. You know I mean? These stories yeah. and all. These are not made up. These, uh, yeah, this I know. real <laughs> thing. <laughs> and uh, I like the one, I mean, I liked all of them, but uh, some of them stuck out at me. The one about the uh, shark attacking your boat. Yeah. And even 52 of his teeth in it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you, we had to uh, get pliers and take the broken teeth out of the boat, and then we fiberglass the bottom of it and make it a little tougher. It was a wood boat. And y'all come <coughs> to the, you know, Shark Week, so a lot of everybody talking about sharks and different things, and uh, but y'all had your own shark stories. Y'all, y'all just go along and just harpoon. We uh, harpooned them, yeah, and down off lands in that shallow yeah. water down there. <laughs> just, just some good, good people having good fun, good clean fun. And then, uh, uh, it might have been, I uh, forget who it was now, uh, the 522 pound fish they got up, they, they brought up the the, uh, the grouper. It was, yeah. it was just uh, Petey, I think. Pete Peters, yeah. Uh, Pete Peters. And he's a little bitty guy, too. Yeah, Petey and Bert were 506 right pound jukefish, fish, yeah. You can yeah. see it. There's a picture of it right there and all. Uh, and we, yeah. were, we were pretty young to start with. Yeah. You know, we, were, <laughs> we were in uh, high school there. I see where your dad's built a lot of the boats on it. A lot of the yeah. boats y'all used. Yeah. And, uh, we had some pretty crude equipment. And back then, to, in order to take those big fish like that, we had to build our own guns because at that time there were no mm -hmm. spear guns that were capable of taking those kind of fish. So we we uh, made it out and we designed things and uh, really ingenious, some of them. And we were very successful. So y'all were able to get like a gun stock and all, then uh, the hosing yeah. and, and the tubing. And yeah, we bought surgical tubing, you know, to power them, and uh, we made them out of mahogany usually, and we designed and built our own triggers and built our own spears, and a couple of the guys knew how to weld, and we knew, learned how to solder, and, and we learned how to make things really strong because it takes some strong equipment to hold fish that size. Y'all were doing industrial grade before y'all knew it was industrial That's right. grade. That's right. <laughs> uh, 
It, it was just fascinating, these stories. Now, y'all have got this book down there, right? Yeah, obviously. we got some and, uh, at the store. And, uh, but it's, it's interesting reading, and it's yeah, just... It's uh, good, good, easy reading, and uh, just, just true stories. If you like true stories of what was going on here and all. I know you got old Carter crap right back here behind this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, you know, you're talking about the boats and all y'all, they build them sort of out of plywood. But those early boats, you had, I saw some of the dads that built them out of planks, some juniper yeah. planks. Yeah. And juniper was just <laughs> such a good wood. That's right. Uh, I had a an old boat that had the bow went up on it, you know, to take rough water. Mm -hmm. And they weren't, boats we had were not large. Mine was 15 foot mm -hmm. with a 35 horse Evan Rude, and we went, uh, you know, offshore 12, 15 miles with them. Of course, we had to pick our weather. I remember every morning that when I wake up, I'd look out my window and I'd look at the paper mill smoke. Because going straight up, I'd get up and go. If uh, it was nine degrees, <laughs> go back to sleep. And you can still do that. I yeah, still I mean, you do really that. Can. I mean, I, you can I, depend on that. Yes, sir, you can. It is, that smoke's going to be there in that wind direction. And, That's and, right. And, and, and the volume of it is going to be right. there. Uh, and I, I got to go one time, I think y'all said y'all water, water skied some behind them. And, Oh yeah, we we'd water ski. We'd go diving in the morning and water ski in the middle of the day. On a Sunday afternoon, we'd go to church. <laughs> and then we'd be water skiing and looking for sharks at the same time. Oh, yeah. If you saw the shark, then he came back and tried to spear him. I remember one day we were in about ten foot of water, real clear, and there was some little sharks there, five or six foot long. We were water skiing, and we were pulling my younger brother. And we'd pull him over those sharks and slow down. He'd start to sink, and we'd jerk him back up again. <laughs> you know, just foolish boys. Oh, I was like, yeah, I was the youngest brother got to <laughs> right. do that. Yeah. I think we all went through those things and all. And I, I built a bond between the brothers. You know? Right, right. <laughs> well, we're going to start wrapping things up. I would encourage you to uh, get this book and all. It's very, uh, very enjoyable. And uh, Scott wrote about it the other day and all. And uh, good, true stories and all. Well, Ron, we've got to wrap it up, buddy. Thank you. Enjoyed it. And uh, folks, well, I might check out all these cameras now. That's a a great selection right there. Oh, really. we got plenty of them. Good stuff. And always, we appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors and appreciate you shopping with our sponsors. I keep it on the air. You be sure to do something good for someone today. You have a great day. and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.